Hi guys, just a quick tutorial here on bonding patterns. Here are some common elements found in many molecules. Uh, you may have heard of organic molecules. They're molecules containing carbon, hydrogen, and other elements such as nitrogen and oxygen, uh, some sulfur, phosphorus, fluorine, etc. So I'm just going to write the group uh, period two elements here, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and then hydrogen is very common as well. So I'm going to add that to our list. And by now, you know, to draw Lewis structures, we usually start with the number of valence electrons. So the outermost electrons in a hydrogen atom is shown by the number here. Uh, it's one. So we draw hydrogen with one dot to represent that valence electron. OK, and we can do the same with the rest of the elements just based on where they are in the periodic table. So carbon has four valence electrons, so we would draw carbon with one, two, three, four. Now it's useful to start off with unpaired electrons and then go back and pair them. So for nitrogen, nitrogen has five, one, two, three, four, and then just pick any of those four sides and put your last electron there. Oxygen, one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, because it's got six valence electrons. And then fluorine is in group seven, so seven valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now one thing you'll notice when you do that is uh, how many electrons are unpaired. So for example, carbon or hydrogen has one unpaired electron, and so does fluorine. So what happens is they usually like to get together and make a bond. And they only need that one bond in order to make a full shell, so to complete their octet or duet for hydrogen. So let's put those in a column here. So hydrogen, oh, sorry. Da, 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 da. Hydrogen and fluorine, they're similar in that they have one unpaired valence electron. So that means they tend to make one bond because they want to pair that unpaired electron. Let's go back now and look at carbon. Carbon has four unpaired electrons. One, I uh, keep doing that. One, uh, one, two, three, four. And so how many bonds is carbon going to make? Well, it's going to want to pair with another atom with a valence electron and then pair here and pair there and pair there because a bond is two electrons. So that means carbon tends to make four bonds. So I'm going to put um, four bonds there. Um, nitrogen, how many unpaired electrons does nitrogen have? It's got one, two, three. And remember, to come up with that, we have to do one electron at a time and then pair the rest. And so it ends up that there's only one pair. So this pair is happy. These electrons here want to pair with someone else's single electrons to make pairs called bonds there as well. So we're going to go up here. We're going to write that nitrogen has three unpaired electrons. So it's going to want to make three bonds. And how about oxygen up here? Oxygen has a pair here, a pair here, and then these are unpaired there. So we're going to highlight those. Those are the places where we're expecting to make bonds. So that means oxygen will prefer to make two bonds. All right. This sort of forms a... So uh, just to backtrack, the number of unpaired electrons then in a Lewis structure can sometimes help you predict how many bonds that element will want to form. And that is very common then. Carbon pretty much, you know, with some exceptions, makes four bonds. Nitrogen, three, oxygen, two, and fluorine and hydrogen, one. So this uh, forms what I call the honk rule, H-O-N-C. And that is that the number of bonds that you usually make for that element are 1, 2, 3, and 4, respectively. So when I see a molecule like um, C2H6O, for example, this is a chemical formula for a molecule, I can use the Honk rule to try to figure out a good structure for that. 
So for example, I'm going to draw carbon. And then I know carbon uh, C2, so I could draw another carbon attached to that. And then I could draw hydrogens. So one, two, three. And see, I've got carbon with four bonds, because that's part of the honk rule now. So this carbon has an octet, and I'm not going to want to squeeze anything else in there. So now I'm going to keep going. So I've used three hydrogens, so I have three more. So I'm going to put three here. Now that's not right because I haven't used the oxygen yet. And so I've, I've pretty much, this is called saturated. I've saturated this molecule with hydrogens. And there's no room for the oxygen. Carbon has four bonds. Hydrogen has one bond. Everyone seems pretty happy. But I have an oxygen here. So what I'm going to have to do is delete that. Squeeze in an oxygen in here. And then the oxygen, how many bonds does it want? I'm going to look over here. Oxygen wants two bonds. So here's one bond. So I'm going to have another bond right here. And now I have space for another atom. And so that's where I can put that hydrogen that I had to erase earlier. So uh, now everyone's got an octet if, except for this oxygen. So what I want to do here is make sure that this oxygen has uh, its lone pairs to make up for that um, difference. So everyone wants to have an octet. If oxygen has two bonds, that means it has to have two lone pairs. So let's take a look at each element and say, okay, carbon has four bonds and it doesn't have any lone pairs. Um, nitrogen has three bonds, so it's got to have a lone pair. And then oxygen, when it makes two bonds, it's got to have two lone pairs. And fluorine, when it makes one bond, it's going to have three lone pairs. And those lone pairs are important in making sure that we're showing all the elements have fulfilled their octet. All right, last thing is um, because of the honk rule, uh, we will normally see carbon with four single bonds. Sometimes, um, as long as it's got four bonds, it's happy. It's got its octet. Well, so that means that carbon can sometimes have a double bond, but it means it would have to have two single bonds as well. One, two, three, four. As long as it's got four bonds, doesn't matter how they're arranged. So it's still going to meet its octet requirement. And then another way you can have, can you guess what else we can do with this? We can have our triple bond, but that means how many bonds does carbon need in addition to these three? It needs to have a fourth bond. So these are the common bonding patterns that we see in molecules. So when you see a molecule like um, C, uh, CH4 is pretty common, then we know it's going to look like that. If we see something like C2H4, for example, I'm going to try that real quick. I have one, two, three, four hydrogens. And that's all I have, but carbon needs four bonds. So uh, I'm just going to add a bond right here. And there's that bonding pattern that's right there. So um, that's also very common. And then the last one is what if I had C2H2? So I'll do the same thing I did before. I'll just put two C's and I'll put two H's. But notice I've run out of atoms. That's all I have. But these don't have an octet. These carbons here need an octet. Well, in order to get an octet, I can just fill in the needed electrons and the bonds such that each carbon can get an octet, two, four, six, eight. This carbon has two, four, six, eight. So this is an octet now. Um, if you're not comfortable doing that, go ahead and count out how many electrons you can have. Carbon each has four, so that's four times two is eight, plus two for each one for each hydrogen. So you're going to have ten electrons total. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So that's another way you can make sure that you've used as many electrons as you're allowed to have. But the point was that we see this bonding pattern where we have a triple bond. So feel free to be, you know, be comfortable with a couple of things here. Carbon makes four bonds. We know that because it's in group four. And when you draw its Lewis structure, it has four unpaired electrons. We also know it has to have four bonds because it's got to have an octet. 
and those four bonds can be arranged in these different patterns. Four single bonds, a double bond and two single bonds, or a triple bond and a single bond. That all, um, that all results in four bonds total. So if you apply that across the other elements, we'll see um, nitrogen, for example. Let's look at nitrogen. So we're used to seeing it like this, where each Lewis, uh, each each dot that we had would want to pair with someone else and make three bonds. So what are some different patterns there? Do you see how that's similar to this one? Um, we have just single bonds. Is there a way to rearrange these bonds so that we have double and triple bonds? And the answer is yes. We can just move those bonds over. And so I'm just taking these two bonds and turning them into a double bond, and this single bond here just stays there. I can also make a triple bond by moving this single bond over to here and getting that. So notice, no matter what, it's always three bonds and a lone pair. So no matter what, but th those three bonds can be arranged either as three separate single bonds, a double bond and a single bond, or a triple bond. And then the last one is um, oxygen. Oxygen we know as this, so it tends to make two bonds, one here and one there. Is What other arrangements are possible for this? Well, like we did before, I can just move this single bond over to here, and we can make a double bond. So that's also a very common pattern. For example, uh, for those of you guys who use nail polish remover, um, that's acetone. That's a carbon bonded to two other carbons and a double bond oxygen like that. So there's that bonding pattern right there. So this is very common to find in molecules. And then there actually is one more pattern, which is the easiest one, I think. It's just the hydrogen and fluorine. Um, and that one is where you have one bond. So you, normally you see hydrogen and all group seven elements, like fluorine, chlorine, uh, bromine, and iodine. All of these will have one bond and three lone pairs. Um, and so that's like in molecules like um, uh, hydrochloric acid, which is stomach acid or gastric acid. Okay, see how hydrogen has its one bond and then the halogen has its one bond. So that's a very common bonding pattern as well.